Welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to be going over the ST202 chassis, uh, magazines, pamphlets, brochures, all of that good stuff. So I bought all of these and accrued these over the past year and a half. Uh, many of them are super difficult to find. So I wanted to share this information with you guys. I will not be going much over the ST205 stuff here because that information is all over the web. There's many videos, it's been tuned in every single possible way that you can imagine. So nothing new there. But uh, to start off, I'm going to be mainly be focusing on the SS3 98 to 99 uh, Celica stuff. And the way they worded these things, it says a styling that leaves a vivid impression that makes you want to ride it yourself. This, that is the Celica development concept. Starting from the front wheel, the side form is narrowed down toward the rear and boldly cut at the rear end and a beautiful line flowing from the front fender to the A-pillar roof and rear end. So that's that first page. It says to select the content. This is 94 to 95 a brochure. Lots of stuff through eBay and most of it through Yahoo Auctions, through Jesse Streeter. SFE, SS1, Smex. Interior is really nice. See the horns, a little bit different here. And the uh, seats are a slight bit different, or at least it seems that way, because I've never seen really good condition. Um, Celica seats, this is also the premium. Big speakers around. And from talking to a couple people locally, they're saying it's not all it's hyped up to be. Uh, but here is the viscous LSD twin piston caliper and this is showing the E56 uh, basically set up here all the sport suspension from 94 to 95. Here is the text to show you what it is saying there. Nothing really all that interesting. Here is some of the factory parts that were optional at the time. Some of the colors, obviously. Wind tunnel testing up here. Some of the crash, crash safety ratings and all that stuff there. And then the last page here, which shows some of the dealer options. I will be going over the specifics of all these things in the, for sure, but some of them visually you can just tell what they are. And then here's that page 24. But for the most part, it's going to be the same as what you saw. Very nice color for the 205. GT4, again some of the same, uh, viscous was also used in the E154F transaxle, so it has the addition of some of the GT4 stuff. CD player with multiple antennas, it looks like for GPS. But the way they wore these things. Interesting how they sold these with a sunroof and an automatic uh, transaxle. Really shouldn't have done that, but I will go over another video of what the SS3 Celica could have been. 
So definitely some nice interior shots there of factory cloth seats. I really do like this color a lot. Here's GT4 Celica. This was actually sold on Yahoo Auctions a little while ago, but I didn't have a chance to buy them. It's kind of cool, especially if you're going to car show or car meet and you don't want to expose your license plate. Then this is a convertible beam Celica. You can tell obviously by the SS3 wheels. And these are uh, open differential shots at night. Some nice pictures there of the engine bay. Some more information here. Pages 16, 17, and some of 18 as well. Showing the helical limited slip. Some more interior pictures there. And text to follow. Power folding mirrors. Car SR2s. Stock SS3 wheel versus standard SS2. Crash safety ratings. I do know they, they had to do updates for 96, 97 to meet the standards. Upgraded the ABS as well. The SS1 blue color is available for all SS3 models as well. This continued the third gen ACIS engine. They only have the beams variants from 98 to 99. And Three ninety five cell phone available communication goods. Not sure what this is here. But here we have the optional Tom's fifteen by seven inch wheels. Don't they don't list the offset there, but sometimes decals, the shift knob I've never seen before uh, being sold anywhere. Then we have here on the left side, these are optional side skirts, rear spats, and then front spats here. A proximity sensor, which detects things as close as 19 inches away. This front bumper, uh, like molding here to protect, kind of similar to what you get on the doors on current cars. But then, Add something like that for the corners of the front bumper. Wheel locks, OEM alarm. Then we have the different uh, roof racks here, storages, different accessories, golden badge, an OEM um, visor option, cool silica decals. Stuff here. This is a uh, compass, some green underglow here for the inside, and knee pad rest. Then we have like a daytime running light um, detection here, map light. This is a, a static discharge for your finger, your fantasy stuff, privacy glass cover that lets light in but doesn't. So it lets light out, but doesn't let light in. I think that's how it works. Not too sure. Then we have this here, which I've never seen before. It's like a rear console storage for the passengers. We have a sunglass visor compartments. It's like valet style keep. Get yours or lose it. 
And this looks here like the rain guards, which doesn't really do much, but this is cool to have an all-purpose weather mat for right-hand drive vehicles. I like this theme right here, blue. For the floor mats, and this is like, I don't know, this little wire, I don't know what the heck this is for. But the pricing is the same between these two. It's an all-purpose uh, weather uh, trunk. Mats, they have an electronic here, device to bring the car jack up without you tinkering away at the side of the road, breaking the sweat. The prices for some of these things. I don't know how this is connected. Obviously it's not Bluetooth, but pretty cool there. I don't think, yeah, it's an air freshener. I first thought it was some sort of speaker device. And then these little accessories, they call it. They uh, released another version of that white team by seven wheels and extra our new Dom Tom's decals. That pedals, covers. This is the Tom's carbon fiber look, gauge cluster finish. Again, showing that these are not TRD. Parts, but they are OEM optional parts. Then uh, the bra here, as well as a new proximity sensors for the front now. And then what else is new here? Let's see. This rear cup holder. I guess like a more modern, all blacked out purpose weather mat for the trunk. And. That pretty much covers it. I don't see anything else new. Maybe this here to prevent light from coming in. Sunshade. That pretty much covers it. Page bar, which I've never seen anybody have installed on their uh, SC205 or 202. I mean, excuse me, this is a 205 version. It's a larger uh, hump area. Uh, then you have these, which are rear spoiler adapters. Many people I thought for the longest time was a European domestic option. But it shows here as a C1, maybe someone has a source to actually say that they're for European domestic market. I doubt that they are. This is a C1 product. C1, I, be, I guess, would be considered like the um, like the spoon sports of a Honda. They, were, they had a lot of different products for the Celica um, back in the day. Then just flipping through some stuff here. I thought there would be some interesting stuff about the beams here, but if you guys want to read about it, I'll just show the text real quick. Some lineage and just information on the GT4. Some more cool pictures here. There's some more of that text right there. Spoiler, the ductile spoiler. There's a company that currently has something like this very similar for the JZ-80 Supra made. I asked them if they could make something for my chassis, but they ignored me. Uh, this is, I don't know what this is here, this vent up top. It's a theme amongst the WRC builds. And then, So I guess I'm gonna be skipping a lot through all this stuff. You can see again the Gen 1 C1 strut bar. And then here at the bottom left here, they like shaved it down. It looks like the TRD version of the strut bar there. And then we have some 3SGE tuning. Here's the text from the previous pages. It's a 3S GTE into SD202. Some of the text there of all the parts that were fitted to the 202 chassis at the time. Don't really find them aesthetically pleasing. But there's all that information there. 
and your page 46 to 47, just kind of lineage of the 3SGE stuff. Three SGTE stuff as well. And just to show you that text again. Some BVTI information there towards the bottom. FFSL to the latest VVTI 3SGE up to circuit Kyoto Design College is participating in the Super TIQ with FFSELCA. In other words, the mechanics involved in this, what is noteworthy about this machine is that it is switched to the 3SGE equipped with a variable valve timing mechanism VVTI from the third round of 1998. Furthermore, by controlling this MoTeC, this with MoTeC, 205 horsepower is squeezed out. However, this number is still far from the limit because the computer that controls the engine is still in its provisional specification. And the shape of the muffler is far from ideal. On the other hand, it seems that the settings of the suspension is progressing smoothly as the machine is in its second year of the Super Shot, which is one of Salka's characteristics, is not used on purpose, and Bilsen is incorporated in this normal McPherson style legs. In the future, they will aim for more rear stability. So my guess is this is an SS2 uh, version of it, which came with an open diff, so I don't know if they fitted a limited slip TRD on there, I don't see any information about there, but uh, it would seem like more of a headache to swap everything over to McPherson, um, which is why it leads me, leads me to believe that this is an SS2 equipped beams, which is a factory option car. And then some of the highlights of it, TRD arrow on the front, cockpit, room stripped of everything unnecessary, required for NA is also small. Uh, tires and wheels, 205, 55, 15. Hanna Sport Wheels. Uh, I'd like it to be 45 if not restricted by the rules. Like again, these are all, you know, they have rules and regulations for what they can and can't be. I'll go over a video on what the SS3 Celica could have been, uh, which would have attained, changed the outcomes of all these sorts of things. Um, and probably would have highlighted its features way more in the 90s and the late 2000s. Sorry, early 2000s, excuse me. And then it says uh, computer controlled by MoTeC. If it, it is said that it will rotate up to 8,400 RPMs, which is a thousand more than usual. 7,450 is the fuel cut for the beams motor. And then that pretty much covers all of that. So yeah, TRD, they have a TRD strut bar here. It's SARD, which says they have for 202. I never knew that they made something. Then we have a couple different Tanabi variants. Tanabi sounds really good. Um, then we have your HKS. This is like almost like an OEM muffler, but it looks, looks like it's a baffle design just by the shape of the inlet and then outlet of the exhaust uh, tip, or muffler tip, excuse me, which is far from ideal, which you'd want. Um, you want a straight through design like what uh, Kakimoto offers. Sheep. Sheepdog, that's, that's a funny. Who's this guy? This guy right here, he's a sheep doodle. But, uh. Then. Pretty much covers that. This was the early iteration of TRD. Uh, design was like a dark blue rather than red the potential of the 3SGT, 3SGE capabilities for tuning. And you can see here it says, possibility of BVTI tuning, question mark. Since December 1997, the BVTI box has not only varial valve, varial intake with BVTI, but also shape support itself has become superior and makes making it more torque and easier to handle. However, the higher rims are still heating a ceiling and we would like to replace the cam as a fund fundamental solution, but there are currently no plans to market it. Computer analysis seems to be difficult, but it is said that some teams set Motec for racing and finish the re engine rev to plus 1,000. So those are all the translation and notes that I have for that. 
and then just wanted to highlight some of the aero parts. This is kind of cool here, this company called Zapped. The bumper is quite large. They have like these cooling ducts to run for the braking system and then they have like a front splitter here. This is what you call front splitter, yeah. Or more, it's maybe just in direct airflow away from it. You can see that up close picture there. And that pretty much covers that. These are pretty cool, like aerodynamic AS mirrors for the 202, 205 chassis. And you got these larger, you guys had to like cut into the bumper for the 205 Celica. Same with this ray brake, it doesn't look like it cuts into the actual bumper. But, uh, that covers that. And this Hyper Rev number two for the Celica covers most of seven gen stuff. Hard here, obviously made their VVTi uh, intake, and then HKS hat one two. I can just see where's it at. Can I find it? Can I find it? Well, it's not there. But anyway, then we have here some of the ECU tuning capabilities. Uh, companies like. Um, Brash Boy reflashed the 1ZZ motor to work on the 3HE beams red top. There's a company like iMac, again shows VVTi. And that's pretty much NC1 as well. Uh, the, what they would usually do um, is you would send in your original ECU and then they would reflash it and give you your original ECU box back. I think it would take like six to eight weeks for them to do that. What I remember when I was looking online, like eight, nine years ago. I'm sorry, longer than that. And then, we have here, some cams, a company called June or Jun, however you pronounce it. They show here some VVTi capabilities. Some of them I have like VVTi enabled. And some of them have the VVTi uh, disabled. Same with some of the Toyota Power cams, uh, cam sprockets up here. From HKS, they just use a 3SGTE engine, but then later they used, did use a 3SGTE beams VVTi motor and our WRC Customs. Many people in the past, I always thought it was a European domestic option, this little bottom like flare splitter, if you will. Uh, many big times they came black. But this is actually made by WRC Custom. And then here on the bottom, we have like the clear taillights made by Hilltop. I know that's a thing for uh, mid 90s Civics. It's a thing that people do. And then we have like a hood, a lightweight hood, Dogfight Pro. and some carbon fiber hoods for the 205. And that pretty much covers that. And then you notice the big brake kit. Basically, it's the GT4 front end brakes with the slotted TRD rotors. You have the, the knuckle. You have they're like OEM brake lines. Yeah, it looks like they're OEM. It doesn't seem to be stainless steel since they didn't make anything for the Super Shot stainless steel. And then you have. Uh, Updated street pads, new mounting bolts for the calipers and the brake dust shields. That's pretty cool. And these type FT wheels took about 40 days to make. Stuff here, this is just showing the SD202 stuff. Nothing really all that uh, exciting. I will show you now a 
actual colored pictures of all these parts that were available for the 202 chassis and the 205. This is just showing the catalog version of what it looks like. This is a limited slip for E56 and the 1.5 way, which is the same uh, limited slip that fits onto the E153 uh, transaxle on the SW20 chassis. So yeah, that's that. And then this is kind of cool here. If we go here to the aero parts here, like the Camry Gracia, the Camry Thanks. Um, and then we have um, Camry Gracia TRD version. Huh. I guess that's the wagon. This one on the bottom is obviously the sedan style, but this is interesting here. I always thought Cavalier was a Chevy product, but it looks like it actually is a Toyota product. This is a TRD Sports Edition which is quite fascinating how they released a new TRD Sports edition for this one, but not for the Celica. But this was made in 2000. And then, like I said, this is the, uh, this is the, the, the T3 wheels. You can see here this spec. I'll show you a close up of that. Right here, 17 by seven and a half plus 30, uh, 100 by five, five and 100 bolt pattern at 7.2 kilograms. So if I were, was able to come across those wheels, I'd probably definitely pick them up if I could ever afford them. and 
super strut they are interchangeable but spring weights are slightly different for the front end and then this is all good stuff here to look at it's kind of skimming over very quickly this is not a specific 90s trd wheel this is due to the release of the scion in usa and 80 inch wheels on the six gen celica are way too large this billet oil cap is pretty cool then there is the trd duracon shift knobs white one's pretty neat to match with the white fate gauges on the ss3 celica then a special made to order exterior parts there's only two which trd released I'll clarify a little more on that later. Some parts that were discontinued at the time of the post. Um, if we look here to the brochure that was released in the USA, this is what it looked like. And then for the Japanese market, there was a lot more options. Obviously, these wheels here, uh, I've never seen them available for the six gen, but apparently this guy in either Taiwan or the Philippines had fitted them to his car and under his description I didn't see that he converted to the 5x114 because these were available mainly for the SW20 and the JZA80 Supra so that's a little different and then exterior parts Rusty posted this back in 2013 the parts called TRD side skirts and TRD splitters are not listed here as they are not a TRD part so that clearly you know, clarifies that, and we already have proof that these are the only things in the brochure and catalog that exist for TRD exterior parts. Even though people will continuously call them TRD side skirts and front spats and rear spats, these wheels belong in the 2000s era. Uh, Celica is an MRS. They weighed 16 pounds for the 17 by 7 and a half. Some other parts here, which many are aware of. And this golden oil cap is cool. Then we have two versions of the sports thermostat. So you can customize your circuit edition coilovers with different spring rates. I believe even the dampeners you can have uh, changed out as well. Or valving, I should say. Then you have the transaxle mounts and engine mount here. To your liking if you want to upgrade. We had rear bushings for the control arms and upper mounts for the reinforcement. Just a repeat of what I just showed you guys. Brake bias for street and track additions. So that's all cool here. Helical, limited slip, mechanical type via clutch. Uh, no viscous was available here. Then there is just a couple of close pictures of these things function these trd seats are cool i've seen them in person at the toyota museum in torrance before they had moved out to texas and then this portion here is made by another company right now but i heard it's not as good as what trd used to offer this is something that i bought on yahoo auctions you can see the again these are the only two exterior parts that exist and the big brake kit has this th the lines the knuckle the dust plate or the brake dust shield and then front and rear pads as well to match which look like it's a street version style but that's pretty cool these type ft wheels i believe took up to six weeks to make since they are custom order you can see here the pricing on that 198,000 yen it's a pretty good bargain for back in the day. This looks like a harness to the four point. So that's that. And that pretty much covers everything. BSG, the race GTE. Then we have the bracing for the brake master cylinder. This is a common model I've seen among Civics and Integras but it's to uh, make sure all the pedal feel back feedback is nice and stiff for dependability upon entry of certain turns and then we have the second third and fourth generation 3SGE exhaust manifolds and then here is the elongated uh, V pipe or Y pipe as I call it 
I guess is they're using solid mounts all around because if you have a setup like this without the springy bolts or flex section in here you will break the welds and this will start to come loose and you'll have an exhaust leak and then here for the SS2 and the hyper rev magazine for the beams motor if they had an 8000 rpm supposed uh, max rpm for max output it would be 103 miles per hour in third gear which is way too long so the E56 was in production obviously for a while and even this 4.9 RAV4 33 final drive was available but like I said I doubt they were able to able I doubt they were able to mess with gear ratios because they had already stated the 205 55 15 they had to stick with that size because of an OEM regula regulation Eso una venganza. Underglow here. And if you want to look at all these things, this guy has literally almost everything that I showed in the original accessories uh, brochure. So that's pretty cool. If you want to take a look at all, all those things here, it's a pretty long video. And then here, we go to 512. <laughs> さがきこのちんさん早々にピットイン。ちんさん、お手押せ沼もう一回できたんですけど、ドライブシャフトは<笑> <笑>まあ、そうです。<笑><笑> We go to the video option 55. We can see from five minutes. Saisho wa San Suji 3HE beams plant. Uh, power plant in the drag car. Time no mo kyo wa ma kyubyo dai. Masani Saito san muke desu. うん、斉藤って誰のことかいな。緊張してるでしょ。力が少なくちゃ辛いもん。ミッション